Hello everyone, welcome to another Hertz Drums tutorial. In this clip we're going to take a look at the instrument settings section of the plugin, which is used to adjust the sound of the selected instrument. First of all, let's select an instrument by simply clicking on it in the drum kit, and solo the snare channel for now in the main tab of the mixer. The name of the selected instrument will show up in this field. Here you also have a pad to play the selected instrument. Now to the controls. First of all, you have the trim handle, which controls the overall volume of the selected instrument. You can double-click any of the controls to set it back to zero. Now the mic selector allows you to switch between different types of mics. It affects only the direct input or the DI signal, so to be able to hear the difference more clearly, I'm going to solo it out by moving the other three sliders in this area all the way to the left. So the mic selector allows you to switch between three different types of mics. A, B, and C. Now let me reload my rock metal preset to be able to hear the full kit again. And I'm gonna show you something really cool. So if you're adjusting a symbol, you can right-click on one of the mic options to switch the mics across all of the symbols. Now, as you can see, all the symbols are switched to the mic A. Similarly on the toms, you just select a tom, right-click on any of the mic types, and as you can see, it switches the mics on all of the toms. Alright, now we're back to our snare drum, and we can talk about the rest of the controls. So the pitch slider is used to adjust the pitch of the instrument. Okay, then we have the sub slider that controls the volume of the sub mic signal. For the snare drum, it's the snare bottom mic that captures the sound of the snare spring, while for the kick drum and the toms, for example, it will be the sub frequency mic. Now we can hear more spring. The effects slider allows you to blend in an additional sample for each instrument. Now pay attention to how it changes the attack and the overall character of the snare. Ok, the three sliders we have talked about, namely the DI, Sub and FX slider, are routed to the snare channel in the main tab of the mixer. Now, to be able to hear what the overhead or the OH slider does, let's unsolo the snare channel and solo the overhead group in the mixer. As the name suggests, the overhead slider allows you to control the level of the snare drum in the overhead mics. Now let's unsolo the overhead group and solo the snare group in the Groups tab of the mixer. It receives all the signals played by the selected instrument, as well as the room and reverb signals, which we haven't talked about yet. The room sound was captured in the actual drum room here at Hertz Studios, and for the reverb we used a reverb effect. So this panel over here allows you to control the proportion between room and reverb. So this is the completely dry signal. Let's now turn the room to the max.
Okay, now let's hear the reverb. And now let's go completely crazy and crank it all the way up. Okay, so now I'm going to unsolo the snare group and set the proportion between room and reverb the way I like it in the mix. This sounds good to me. The room and reverb signals are also routed to the respective groups in the mixer. Now, the final thing to add here is that you can reverse the phase of each sample played by the plugin using the phase inversion switches next to the level controls. This might be useful when you blend different samples together, which we're going to talk about in one of the next videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned!